I think there's a lot of misconception around it and a lot of things get labeled high intensity exercise, including, you know, bodybuilding, CrossFit, even um, in long distance endurance can sometimes be labeled as high intensity exercise. Sure. Yeah. Um, so the intensity is always a relative term. Anything basically exercise is defined by intensity. So when you are laying in bed asleep, that's as far away from exercise as you can get without being dead. Anything above that level, whether it's just walking, slow jog, jogging fast, sprinting, high intensity interval aerobics, CrossFit, you know, strength training, high, in high intensity, you know, exercise body by science type of thing. That's all just a continuum where the intensity is going up in a stepwise fashion. So in terms of effort, anything above a baseline of as close to zero as possible is an incremental increase in intensity. So to really discuss you know, what this exercise paradigm is trying to accomplish and why we call it high intensity exercise is we have to think in first principles. And the first principle is this, is we are animals. So biological organisms are broken down by taxonomy. So there's King Philip came over for gold and silver, kingdom, phylum, organism, genus, species, all that. Um, so we are in the kingdom animalia. And so that means we're animals, which are different from the kingdom plantae, which are plants. Um, plants are autotrophs. They make their own food. They make their own energy. Animals are heterotrophs, which means they have to go and acquire their food, which therefore means the kingdom animal, their major distinguishing characteristic is movement. So movement is our most preserved biologic function. Without movement, we can't get food and we can't keep from becoming food. So our skeletal muscle is sort of a defining um, organ or tissue for the rest of the organism. It runs the show. So to the extent that we challenge the skeletal muscle is the extent to which we can make physiologic and adaptations and improvements. So if you make functional improvement in skeletal muscle, all the other tissues of the body benefit from a downward cascading effect because all of the other tissues of the body have to support the mechanical functioning of skeletal muscle. Well, our approach to that is we want to aggressively recruit skeletal muscle by doing work, and we want to fatigue it as deeply as possible in a time-efficient manner. Because if you threaten movement, if you fatigue muscle to the point that it becomes dyskinetic and could temporarily no longer function, you have created a hormetic effect, a hormetic threat to its most preserve biologic function. And that stimulus, that threat to our most preserved biologic function triggers an adaptive response out of the body. The body will therefore generate an adaptive response of strengthening and then an augmentation of all the metabolic and physiologic subsystems that allow that to happen. So it so turns out that the way to most aggressively recruit muscle is to make certain that it's under a continuous and uninterrupted load. And the way to get the best continuous and most uninterrupted load of muscle is to expose it to resistance and to not allow the musculature to move that resistance quickly enough that the resistance can get moving under its own momentum. Because if momentum is activated, then the resistance is taken off the muscle, the muscle gets a respite, and the aggressive recruitment and fatiguing of that muscle is compromised. So high intensity resistance exercise resorts to use of resistance that is moved in a slow and smooth fashion so that the muscle never gets a respite. So the fatigue is aggressive and continuous 
and deep in a meaningful time frame. So that's what the whole approach.